Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week marks our 100th episode of Degrees of Science, and this week we've got a really cool episode for you. We're taking Degrees of Science on the road to Cameron Park Zoo in Waco to show you the cardiac care program they have for their orangutans, a groundbreaking program that is hoping to catch cardiac disease and help orangutans and other apes. Today we're talking with Emily Ellison, one of the head keepers of the orangutans here at the zoo. So Emily, why is it so important to uh, learn about or do cardiac care for apes and primates that are in uh, managed care? For orangutans, in managed care, cardiac disease is one of their leading causes of death. And so we do all of this training and cardiac behaviors so that we can catch and treat cardiac disease if it were to come up early. Very similar to our preventative care that we get with our physicians. Prior to this training for orangutans and apes, um, you would know about cardiac disease after they passed in that necropsy, the animal autopsy. And so what we do now is we get a head start and we get that jump on this disease. All right, so us as humans, you know, we, we go get our blood taken or our pr blood pressure. How well, is it the same stuff that you're doing with orangutans? Completely, <laughs> but for orangutans, they have the strength of estimated five pro football players for girls and up to eight pro football players for guys. So unlike, you know, nurses that see us, they can just wrap the blood pressure cuff around us. We have to use a system called a tough cuff. So it's an orangutan indestructible cuff that is Velcroed. Uh, it Velcros our disposable cuff into it. And very similar to like the CVS ones. Mm. So they insert it. So we had to be really creative on how do we get this data, but make it orangutan safe. <laughs> so what, what kind of training are y'all doing to get the orangutans to, to do that kind of stuff? So overall it's called operant conditioning or positive reinforcement. So we ask them different behaviors and say their shoulder for a flu shot. And when they participate, they get a treat with it. If they say no, thank you. And they're like, no, I don't want to do that today. Then we can ask again later. We can ask again tomorrow. So it's really cool because it gives them a lot of choice and control in their day. And for us, it builds our relationship with them. All those positive sessions, all those positive moments with training really builds that trust for them. So when we do have to do something scary like the, the pressure of a blood pressure or a poke from an injection with a needle, they have that trust in us and that really is helpful. So it's, they, they have to stay still for some of this, like an EKG or an x-ray. How hard is it to get them to stay still for that? That is one of the most challenging parts <laughs> is getting them to stay still. And so what we do is actually a continual or a synchronous feed. <laughs> so as they're holding still with the EKG probes on them, they get a little bit of juice. <laughs> um, and we can work up to our duration. So maybe they'll hold still for 15 seconds <laughs> between juice. Sometimes they're less patient, <laughs> just like us. <laughs> so y'all are kind of leading the way with this. Uh, what, what are y'all doing? to show other zoos and uh, places uh, about how they can work with their apes with this? Um, it's a pretty unique and pretty advanced training. So we actually started hosting a great ape cardiac health workshop. So we do a free one annually where we invite 25 participants to come down and they watch. We do formal presentations where we talk about blood pressure and then we come to the barn and we watch it. We talk about blood draw and then we come to the barn and watch it. So then they can get really a sense of what that training will look like and take it back home. And what we're hoping is that they take it, they advance it, they make it unique and better um, for them. And if we've helped extend or save one ape's life, then we've succeeded. So primates and apes, they're in different sizes. How hard is it when you say the cuff to yeah. go from a male orangutan or a gorilla to the smaller ones that you need? It's very challenging. And so Georgia Tech and Zoo Atlanta created a tough cuff. It's really cool. It's a high molecular polyethylene. And so they figured out the pressure that the blood pressure cuff pushes back on the arm, but it's limited. It can do a gorilla wrist or a male orangutan forearm. So then we really left out our chimps, our bonobos, our female orangutans. So we worked with a local hydraulic company in Waco and we actually developed a female or a juvenile size one that could be modified mm. so you measure their arm and then we can send in the measurements and say this is what our blood pressure sleeve size is this is the circumference of our apes arm and they can help make um, one so oh, Pooh awesome. blood pressure training that's with uh, the tough cuff that they made awesome so all right so you're gonna show us some of your yes. training you're doing so we're gonna move over to the orangutan and kind of show you that this is Kutai. Kutai is a 31-year-old female. She is a Bornean orangutan. There are actually three types. There's Sumatran, Bornean, and Tapanuli. And so she's Bornean um, from the island of Borneo. 
And so Kutai is so smart. She's such a fun, feisty personality. Um, and we have a lot of fun with her. And she really enjoys and engages in training uh, very well. She learns a lot um, <laughs> and, and does a really great job working on new behaviors. So, so, what, so you are working on the x-ray here. So what all steps goes on to, to get her to get in the right position? This was actually one of the most challenging behaviors that we've ever done because our orangutans are used to coming up close to us. And so for this, we had to ask them to back away. So we used an old broom handle and targeted it to the back of their shoulder blades right behind them. And so every time they took a step back, we would bridge and give them a little treat. Eventually we were able to pair that with a new behavior called back, which would get them to back up. And then we used laser pointers or locks to target their hands up in the right position. So how much time, hours do you think goes into getting this one still set up to learn? behaviors are really nice and they take minutes. This one probably we worked on for over a year and I would say 20, 30 hours. Wow. All right, Emily, so now we're inside. So where exactly are we at right now? So this is inside the orangutan holding. So on the other side of this wall here, it goes to our habitat. Um, and so a lot of people don't realize that the animals have bedrooms or stalls behind the scenes in their night house. And so our orangutans have six and it, there are doors that connect them all so we can give them all sorts of combinations um, on how many stalls, what stalls they get overnight and we can play with them. All right, so one, one thing here, we got, we got the masks on. Yes. What, what's the reason for that? So this was a COVID protocol that um, we put in place because orangutans are 97% genetically similar to us. They can get a lot of things we can and um, flu, COVID, things like that are one of them. And so it's one of the additions, the PPE additions that we added to keep the orangutan safe. All right, so tell us about what the, what test we're gonna do in here. So we're gonna do Kutai's blood pressure. So very similar to humans, it goes on the arm. The only difference is it doesn't reach her upper arm, it's gonna be on her forearm because of just comfort. And if it were on her upper arm, her face would be kind of pushed too far that it would be uncomfortable. So we do it right above the wrist. The bar there is to keep her arm in the right position. So if she were to go too far forward, it could go over her elbow and we don't want her to injure her elbow or hyperextend it. And so that she just knows to keep her hand there. And we had to train them that it's not a tight grip. It's a very gentle, like just rest there. Because similar to us, if we tense up with our blood pressure, it's gonna throw it off. When we do the training, we get five readings of her arm and five readings of her finger so that if there's any outliers, we can kind of throw those out. Statistically, those aren't viable. And then we can start to figure out her blood pressure over time and create a trend. We actually are doing a study with Baylor on seeing if finger blood pressure or arm blood pressure creates more statistically uh, desirable numbers. So how long does she have to stay still for this? Because I know when you're at yeah. getting blood pressure, it takes a while. She can move on the inflate, uh, whatever she wants, and then on the deflate, she holds still, which probably is about 45 seconds or so, and she'll get a synchronous reinforcement. So she'll get food at, or juice at the exact same time, and that really helps them hold still. Compared to humans, where, where do their blood pressure compare to ours? We're not sure yet. So we don't know a normal for orangutan blood pressure. What we've found out is a trend for each of them. So we can see Kutai's trend over time, and then we can know if her blood pressure is increasing or decreasing. And that could be one of the tools that our veterinary staff uses, but we don't have enough orangutans. Yeah. So for when y'all draw blood, how, how difficult is that? I mean, not the most fun thing to do and trying to hit a vein and get everything right. How hard is that? Um, depends on the personality. And so one of our females is a little bit more apprehensive with needles. Kutai has been really comfortable with it. So the first time that we tried blood draw, she sat and was an angel for it. And so we work our way up with needles. So we start at a really small needle and can work our way up to kind of get them used to it and desensitized. They get a really good treat. So we talked about how she has oatmeal. Well, sometimes on those, it's, here's a marshmallow because you got a blood draw. Yeah, yep. So moving forward, what, what would be the kind of the what else y'all hope to learn or to develop when it comes to the cardiac care for these apes? We are always trying to come up with new things. And so even when I go see my physician, I'm like, what would you want? What tools would you like? 
And so we try to continue finding ways to get measurements. We'll talk to our vet a lot of the times and be like, what ideally would you love to have in an extreme situation? And we've had friends in the field that they train pulse oximeter on their gorillas. And I was like, that's so smart, let's train it. And we were able to, to take things from other friends and peers in the field and bring it back home and add some more. Hopefully by continuing this, if we were ever to develop cardiac disease, we've got the most possible tools in our tool belt to help treat them, to help um, catch the disease, anything like that.